What's up everybody, Troll here. Welcome to our first episode of the how to of concurrency in C Sharp. The entire episodes related to concurrency will teach you how to apply concurrency in C Sharp, how to write a better concurrent applications and will help you to have a deeper understanding related to concurrency. So let's start with our first episode. Concurrency is about doing more than one work at a given time. You can implement concurrency using multi-threading, parallel programming, and asynchronous programming. They are just implementation forms of concurrency. If you want to learn more about them to understand the differences between them and to deep dive into async await keyword, just check my concurrency with async await keyword tutorial to learn more about these elements of concurrency. In our first episode of the how to of concurrence in C we are going to deal with captured variables problem. Truth be told, this is not a problem, but when you face with it as a problem, it is going to be a problem for you. First, let's try to understand what is a captured variable. Of course, the captured variable is not completely related to concurrency, but first we'll try to understand it and then move it to the concurrent environment. Say we have a simple string, str, with my name, and I have a simple action here, okay? This is my action. We already know about delegates. If you want to learn more about delegates, of course, I have a tutorial related to delegates to deep dive to master it. And let's just provide our console.write line str, okay? So in my case, I'm just creating a skeleton for my action and Somewhere in my application, I am going to change my name and then I'm calling my action. So what will happen? What type of data I will see when I execute my action? str to roll or change name. Let's just simply run our application with console read line here. And let me just run. And of course, I will see the latest data and it is going to be our, you see, the change name. The case here is when you construct your delegate, your delegate just will capture the outside latest data. In this case, if you run your action delegate here, you of course will see to roll, let's run it. And then you are going to change the name because uh, that reason our act, the second act will get the latest information. The case here is your lambda body, lambda expression based delegates will capture the latest outside information. And this is called capture it variable because you are capturing the latest value of the variable from the outside when you run your delegate okay and you will face with this problem in your concurrent environment also how let's sit together okay but how it is possible for us to face with captured variables issue in a concurrent environment of course, you are constructing your concurrency mechanism using your old school tasks, maybe in your old .NET thread pulls queues or work item till your .NET 4. And starting from .NET 4 and also with newest .NET Core, you're using task run, task factory start new, or depending on your case, you may use new task. And of course, if you want to learn more the differences between this three, you can check my tasks tutorial to learn more. But for now, I will just use task run. Okay, this is going to be some sort of a wrapper over task start, task factory start new. And let's just simply to specify a condition here, I want to run 10 tasks at a given time to provide a simultaneous operation, a bit simultaneous operation here, of course. And our task run will be constructed using action. And here we are, we are just going to provide a Lambda stuff here. And here it is. Okay, I'm just using Lambda body. Of course, you can use Lambda expression just simply. Just provide console that, oh, come on, and just write with I and a simple formatting here. And before executing, just pause your video and sync on it. 
what do you think this four will print to the console? And when I run, I will see the latest I information. So it is going to be 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Why? Because when you construct your delegates, your delegates doesn't capture the value. They are just capturing the value when you execute these delegates, okay? And in my case, I'm referring to the global memory. This is not a local, but this is a shared I information. And that's why I am getting the 10, the latest I information. And that's why we are seeing all this 10 data. This is a problem. And of course, you are able just simply avoid this problem, just bypass this problem using the temp variable here. And that's why we are creating a local variable. This local variable takes a copy of this I and we are providing this temp here. And in this case, our delegate here will refer to temp and every time for every four, we'll have a different memory location for our temp and for every iteration, we'll capture this temp and that's why we'll see a different values okay and you may ask that why we're not seeing the one two three four in an ordered manner problem here is our task scheduler depending on our task scheduler we are scheduling these tasks and there is no guarantee of your tasks to run in an ordered manner that's why we are seeing a different order when we run our tasks and this is a simple solution to avoid this uh, captured variable problem in your concurrent environment. The other question is, it is possible for us to face with this issue using our old school mechanisms like thread pull, thread. Of course, let me show you the implementation using our thread. So I'm going to use our new thread from system threading. And for the new thread, of course, we need to start our thread. And I'm just going to avoid for now the temp usage and let's implement it with I. And in this case, when I run my application, I will say complete a different implementation. So you see, we have two, six, two, eight, three, three. So you see it captures in a different time interval. And that's why we are seeing a duplicate information. This is a captured variable in your old school. And for the old school implementation, let's just apply the same implementation we applied for our tasks and let me run it. And here we are. We are seeing a completely different values for our iteration. And that's how we are solving our captured variable issue when we implement our concurrency. This was our first episode of the how to of concurrence in C sharp. If you like my videos, please don't forget to subscribe, hit like button, share, and I will see you in the next tutorials.